All right, we are here day three, Intergeo 2024. We've had a wonderful time here meeting companies all over the world. Seriously, the scale of this place is just massive. It's unbelievable. Let's see who we can talk to on our final day here. I keep running into Michael Gula. It's hilarious. If you guys aren't following him, you definitely should. If you're watching this on LinkedIn, you probably already do. But if you're from YouTube, definitely check out his stuff. Uh, amazing work. All right, now we're going to head over to some German friends of mine from a company that you guys have definitely seen here on the channel. All right, so I'm here with Elias from Viagram. And Elias, tell me more about your product lineup. So first of all, Rami, thank you for passing by. And I'm very glad to meet you here at the Intergeo. Of uh, we, we have our, uh, our history together and I'm very glad that you have introduced the Vidoc as it was a few years ago to the public. And now, now we are at the point where we not only have the new generation of the Vidoc, which is the Vidoc Model 24, which has the two lasers. That's what most of the people out there know the Vidoc for. But we now also have a little brother of the Vidoc, which is the Vidoc Light, which nice. you have finally in your hand. Nice, perfect. We have seen that the Vidoc uh, enables users to have accuracy and also a professional surveying device for documentation uh, out, of a, of a, out of, of a smartphone. That means you, have, you enable your, your smartphone to, to be uh, RTK accurate. More and more people are interested on the scanning part of the device but also on specific AR and BIM to field application. Mm. Little brother of the, of the Vidoc now has no lasers, but is focusing on the 3D scanning, but also AR, BIM to field, and comes at a very, very attractive price point. Very good, yeah, no, I think a lot of people that are definitely trying to break into the industry and trying to use AR to help visualize their data in the field could definitely benefit from a device like this because it's still going to boost the accuracy much more than the built-in GPS on the iPhone or the iPad. Absolutely, and uh, there's something which is not very obvious because if you screw away the antenna, what, what comes also with the new Vidoc and also with the new Vidoc Lite is a high performance antenna. That means that users are now even able to do their documentation and surfing under very extreme circumstances and situations. That means near uh, buildings or near trees, mm -hmm. because a lot of job sites actually take place within the city. Right, exactly. And sometimes if you want to measure, for example, trenches or manholes, you even turn the device up to 120 or 130 degrees, and then you still want to benefit from the accuracy, isn't it? Yeah, I want to make sure I maintain my fix. I don't want to Absolutely. get full <laughs> readings. We have developed that antenna in-house, so that's our own production. Same with the Vidoc and the antenna in-house, made in Germany under highest German quality standards. Fantastic, fantastic. The most important thing about the Vidoc is that we have now came to a point where we enhance the device, the users, with three different applications. Mm -hmm. One of, uh, in order to introduce one of the application, it's uh, VSight from VGIS, which is a very powerful AR and BIM to field tool for um, documentation and also for field to BIM application. Mm -hmm. uh, another application which I'm very proud of introducing now to the to the audience is the so-called View app, and the View app has is characterized by two different. Uh, sites which the user experience. On the one hand, we have the 3D scanning mode, which you can describe as a one-click one scanning solution. That means you will never find any simple scanning solution as you will find it in the 3D scanning mode. If you would like to process either locally and download the raw data or upload to the cloud, it's up to you. And on the other hand, within the View app, you will find the geo uh, geometric mode. That means uh, that's more for, for professional users who mm -hmm. are operating in a project structure. That means you have the project logic where you are able to measure single points, lines, polygons and areas. But of course also 3D scanning, you don't want to miss it within your project with more um, experience settings for, for users who have more experience in photogrammetry. And the third application which I'm also glad to introduce is the so-called skin app and the skin app really from my perspective 
is the best solution when it comes to the telecommunication market. So we see that in many, many areas the telecom market is booming and all of them are keen on uh, documenting their work and using that documentation for, for example, invoicing but also quality assurance purposes. We are um, rapidly growing our reseller platform. If people are interested in also become a, becoming a reseller, feel free to contact us either on www.vidoc.com or over LinkedIn and find me on LinkedIn and uh, yeah, reach out if you like. Yeah, I'll leave a link down in the description so you guys can reach out to the us. Thank, Thank you, you, my you so friend. much. <laughs>a chat with kent and sean and see how their experience here at the conference has been i the believe hits. this is the final one the hits keep coming <laughs> well when take... rami comes by you gotta you sit down ever seen nobody yeah, says no to rami. right nobody so rami real quick <laughs> everybody knows who you are but just for those that don't name who you're with what you do that type of thing. oh that's fantastic i appreciate you guys for letting me be here i mean being the last person um so my name is Rami Tamimi. Um, I run a YouTube channel teaching people how to do surveying and uh, playing with geospatial technology. I also uh, am a PhD student still mm -hmm. at The Ohio State University and uh, I run my own surveying school online, uh, thesurveyschool.com. Last time we talked to you, that was kind of just getting going. Yeah. Give us an update on that. Oh, it's been fantastic. Um, we currently have 100 students and uh, coming That's from... Amazing. Yes. Oh, no, it's incredible. People that are just from the industry, uh, either they're drone pilots or they're just getting into surveying or they've graduated and they've got like their FS and they're just trying to ramp up their practical skills. So very diverse group of students. We have, uh, you know, just built a community of highly motivated individuals that are passionate about serving. They find the purpose and they find the, that learning serving is so beneficial to them in their careers and they can do it in a very comfortable and relaxed environment, you know. So uh, we meet in, you know, in, on Zoom once a week just to kind of have like a mastermind, but there are tons of courses, hours and hours of content for them to consume um, and it really dives deep into several topics in the survey. You said uh, of a variety of survey topics. Can you be a little specific on what, what are the type of courses that, you know... Like general outline, kind of, which... I didn't, yeah. I, I didn't ask you. Now we're even. <laughs> fair and fair. Uh, <laughs> we always start with introduction to survey. Talking about the history, talking about the basics, the old equipment, pacing, you know, doing the different types of tape corrections. So we really take them through the fundamentals of what the survey industry is. Then we kind of get into leveling. We talk about like how we set one up, how we do the different types of calcs, the different applications leveling is in, whether it's circuit or profiling or reciprocal, whatever it is, you know. Then we go into total station. So what can we do with the total station, the history of the theatolite. Uh, we show them what a traverse is. We show them what resectioning is. Uh, and then we start to get kind of deep into the technology, how it's functioning today, how the modern technology of total stations uh, operates. We have a GPS course talking about RTK, PPK, trilateration, you know, kind of going through all of those basic concepts. You remember this from school. Yep. And then uh, as we kind of get into it, we teach them Civil 3D. So we show them how to build CAD drawings, how to kind of structure um, a, a product for their customers. Uh, we have a drone mapping course, so they understand photogrammetry, they understand ground control points, how it all ties together. And as we're kind of developing that, we're getting into the geodetic side as well. So there's laser scanning. Um, so the reality capture folks also have something to build off of how they can incorporate surveying into their work. Uh, and then my favorite, my favorite course of all, Business and professional development. Oh, yeah. yes. That's bad. <laughs> right. Like, I never took a course about professional development, and so I just had to learn that through my experience. So why is that not a course? So um, that's my favorite. And, you know, we've, we've built out a, a three-hour course dedicated to talking about every aspect of starting a business, getting licensed, going through the education route, whether you want to teach, how do you get into that, contracts, like things that yeah. you just never learn about, yeah, you know. Sure. So um, I'm very excited about 
about the curriculum and we're constantly improving it and constantly you know building new courses so um, yeah no I think and it's, uh, and it's self, 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 self paced yeah, it's, and you can kind of come in and go you know like because the example I was thinking about was okay you have some people start off scanning and that's all they do mm -hmm. and then at some point they're like okay maybe I need to go back and figure out what surveyors do and then other people like only thing they've ever done is total station so you need to introduce them so it sounds like this is an opportunity for someone to uh, round out their skills and, and, and their abilities um, based on what they're and kind of fill the gaps in their in their career development. yes yes the idea is that you come in with some type of expertise so what value can you bring to the community is when you post about your projects or the things that you're doing or if someone has a question about a topic that you're very knowledgeable in you can step in and answer that question and as students answer questions and you know kind of collaborate with each other in the community there's a gamification process that levels them up and as they're leveling up we have industry sponsors that support the students so they give them access so like one one of our great sponsors is uh, GeoNet they're giving students that are ranking up and providing value to the survey school access to their RTK correction network. Mm. Something that people are those paying guys, for in the industry. Yeah, those guys are, uh, they got something good. They got yeah. something crazy going on yeah. over there. So those are one of our sponsors. Um, another one is Imlid. They are saying anyone that reaches the level seven, which is quite high, someone that's very involved in the school, probably has gone through the coursework, they're giving them a GNSS receiver for free. What the heck? Yes. We've partnered, we've partnered with crazy. several companies now that want to support the school, they want to support the Amazing. students because they truly see the value in online education. Like you can really learn so much and work with people and network with people that they want to invest, they and want to teach people. That's really a great idea because then yeah. you also Check. further incentivize, uh, you know, like getting through the coursework and then, yeah. okay, you get some hardware out of yeah. it. Yeah. It's almost like a stepping stone to start, start doing work. Start out doing there. work yeah. out there, you know, or if my goal is to just help people get into this industry. You know, you guys know how amazing it is, you know, how much opportunity there is and a lack of mentorship and resources, you know, so we need to fill that void. We need to be able to give people what they need to succeed. If anyone's interested, just head over to thesurveyschool.com. One of the hardest working people in geospatial. Oh, easy, yeah. easy. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. So Rami, thank you for your time. Thank yeah, you guys. Good Great. to see you again. As always. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Uh, Thanks for having me. <laughs> the next time. Of course. Jerome, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, tell me a little bit more about AI Infra Solutions. You can translate mobile mapping data into information, geospatial insights. We started as an AI company to, to, do, to do the last part of, in, the, in the whole process, which is the translation. Uh, but now we do an end-to-end. -end. We founded uh, a mobile mapping company. Today we map the whole of the Netherlands year over year completely. And all the lessons learned, that is what we also bring to other countries. So our customers in other countries are big mobile mapping companies. The vision is that they also capture their whole country. What we bring to other countries and to big mobile mapping companies, we help them with special ops. And that's all about the logistics of the capturing cars. It's the, the sensors on your roof. It's making sure that all the data is collected in such a way that it becomes consistent. And also the whole processing and refinement is done in the country where it was captured. And then we have AI lenses. That's where we come from and studio and that allows you to work with the insights that we extract automatically out of the large scale uh, mobile mapping data sets. If you want to capture that scale it makes sense of course that you pick the right sensors. So here's an example of a Ladybug 5 Plus. Uh, the whole world market knows this, uh, this, uh, this camera and we have another example in the roof of the car and what, what we learned is for a lot of use cases you can use the Ladybug or uh, there are other partners that we are talking to as well who provide really nice cameras. Um, but there's also what we learned is that there's at a some level of quality, um, there's, yeah, we, we miss, uh, let's say, the, the pixels, the real quality. And what you see behind you, together with Stammer Imaging, it's a German company, um, we developed the Spider. It's a, a com uh, it's a camera that is, allows you to really see a huge amount of detail further away from the street. So I think if you start working with us, uh, in the Netherlands we do everything end-to-end -end ourselves, but in other countries, if you start working with us, this is the future. All right, so the theme of this whole conference has been collaboration. Watching companies come together, bringing their technology and creating the best products for us users. And so Taladyne and Inertial Labs have partnered together to create a new LiDAR sensor. And Inertial Labs has also created a new recipe lineup for their LiDAR sensors. So uh, let's chat with these guys and learn more about the innovations in UAS LiDAR. Leo. Hey, Ravi. Mark. Good to Hello. see you guys. This is our new high performance 
LiDAR payload. It's called the Echo One, which we at Teledyne Geospatial developed in partnership with Inertial Lab. So for 1.2 kilograms, you've got a high performance LiDAR, so 270 meters to 20% reflectivity, uh, a 90 degree horizontal field of view, and then in track, there's four unique scan angles between plus minus uh, 10 degrees. There's also a five megapixel color camera for, for colorization, or you can add on a Sony 61 megapixel on, on the top. The Inertial Labs recipe uh, hardware is inside this, so you've got their uh, user interface. So all in 1.2 kilos. You know, this is a good looking combo. We have Echo One together with a Whisper Skyscope. This is a brand new American made drone as well, right? It's a very compact, small package that can fly effectively up to, I would say 22 minutes with this package. It's a, it's a very good single operator solution. Uh, quick deploy, very easy. So after you're done collecting the data, what do you guys use for post-processing? That's uh, one huge advantage of uh, Echo One, right? Because inside uh, the, the hardware itself, we do have the Recipe Gen 2 architecture in there, which is very powerful. And when it comes to data processing, it's actually PC Master Pro. It's okay. the very same PC Master Pro that every other Recipe system use to process the data. So the user experience actually is completely receptive. Well, how many returns do I get with uh, the scanner? Uh, you basically get up to eight returns, so lots of returns and wow. forests and other vegetated areas just to make sure that you get the ground. Mm -hmm. um, the nice thing about uh, the long range of 270 meters is that you can basically trade off that laser power for extra vegetation penetration. So fly lower and that's when you'll really get those, those multiple returns. Okay, nice. The big thing really is surveying and mapping. That's the classic use case. But really this is designed to enable new and emerging applications such as electric utility inspection, forestry, transportation projects. All of those really require the features that this has. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, it's NDAA compliant. Oh, so wow. for uh, government projects or critical infrastructure projects that have data security requirements, it complies with those. And at the same time, it's affordably priced compared to uh, similar products that aren't uh, data secure. Another brand new product we call it Recipe Ultra Light. Our design objectives for this one is the lightest weight possible, most compact design, the most streamlined workflow in every way. So unlike our generation one Recipe, you have different configurations with, uh, when it comes to laser camera or whatnot. This one, no. It's all fully integrated one configuration, weighs at 1.2 kilogram. We're still trying to achieve even lighter weight and at an extremely attractive price, yet still providing the same level of performance. And so this is a pretty good choice, I would say, especially for those who are new to this technology and want to get in with a robust, reliable, accurate, good solution actually delivers the high quality data set. And then you look at the full portfolio going from the ultralight to our generation one, which we already have a lot of those out there. Now moving on to generation two and ultimately Teledyne Echo One. So that's our latest full portfolio of Recipe uh, Plus, the Teledyne Geo Special Echo One product out there. So it's cool, check it out. All right, and everyone is packing up their things, and that is a wrap for InterGeo 2024. If you like this type of content, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and if you'd like to learn more about surveying, then check out thesurveyschool.com. I look forward to coming back next year to Frankfurt for InterGeo 2025. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you all next time.